We're going to start with our newsmaker segment and welcome the Attorney General of Kansas, Derek Schmidt, now in his third term. Before becoming Attorney General, Schmidt was elected to the state Senate in 2000, ultimately serving as Majority Leader. We'll talk today about criminal justice reform and some other items as well. General Schmidt, welcome to Ruckus. Thank you very much for coming in, sir. Thanks for the invitation, Mike. I'm sure everybody knows we have an attorney general in Kansas. I'm not sure everyone understands what the responsibilities and roles are. Can you give us a quick overview? Well, we usually say that's a good thing around the office if people aren't waking <laughs> up first thing in the morning wondering about their attorney general. We're the state's lawyer, but that means a lot of different things. Uh, sometimes we're the state's defense counsel when the state, or ultimately the taxpayers, because they have the money, uh, get sued. Sometimes we're criminal prosecutors. Sometimes we're investigators of Medicaid fraud. Sometimes we're running crime victim support programs. Sometimes we're providing counsel and uh, uh, services to state agencies. So it really varies. Uh, the legislature's given us a lot of duties over the years. Unlike the federal government where a president appoints an attorney general uh, who is ultimately confirmed by the Senate, state attorneys general, or at least in Kansas, are elected that means you had to run as a partisan politician. You're a Republican. Would you say you're a basic conservative Republican? Yeah, that's how I've always thought of myself. More liked by the NRA than the ACLU? <laughs> Most days, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you about a, a law that I know was passed in Kansas requiring someone registering to vote to provide proof of citizenship. Mm -hmm. And that law was overturned by a federal district court it was Chris Kobach's law when he was Secretary of State. He appealed the decision. It went to an appellate court. Kobach left office. That's now under your jurisdiction? Right. We inherited those appellate right. cases when Secretary Kobach left office. And, uh, you know, we've continued to defend the statute. I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, the legislature enacted the law, notwithstanding the fact that uh, it's been really associated with the former Secretary of State. It was passed by overwhelming bipartisan majorities in the Kansas legislature, and I think it deserves a vigorous defense. So we're giving it that. You, we've, uh, we've argued the case at the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, and we're awaiting the court's decision. Have any idea when that decision might be no, handed we, down? No, we check every day to see if that's the day, but it hasn't been yet. I want to talk to you, and I know this is a major interest of yours, criminal justice reform. Uh, what is the Criminal Justice Reform Commission? You know, the legislature decided this year that there ought to be a, a, a robust, comprehensive uh, review of the state's criminal justice uh, system with an eye toward reforming it. It's not the first time the legislature has done that. They did it in 2004, set up by statute a commission with a similar mandate, and they've done it again now. And so because of that, uh, we're taking a look. I participate as a member of the commission by law. And uh, from my vantage point, uh, what I've really tried to do, because it's such an enormous topic, uh, we know from the 04 experience, if you bite off too much, maybe not very much gets done. So I've really tried to focus our discussions as much as I can uh, in areas I think there's some, some really uh, sort of opportunity well, for agreement. You're very concerned about people who are incarcerated because of mental health right. and drug usage and, and other addiction problems. In my mind, the question uh, that, that's fruitful is how can we actually make a difference, have a, have a fighting chance of making a difference in changing offender behavior so that they don't reoffend, and therefore our communities are safer down the road. That's good for everybody, from the offender to the community to crime victims. And that really requires, in my view at least, a focus on mental health interventions for folks who, whose misbehavior is motivated by some form of mental illness. Uh, and substance abuse intervention for the large majority of people in our prisons whose uh, misconduct is motivated, at least in part, by their addictions. How costly do you think these reforms you're talking about would cost? How Potentially very. Uh, I've really tried to ring the alarm bell going in because I don't want anyone to have what I believe to be the false notion that you can do criminal justice reform on the cheap. I mean, you can make changes on the cheap, but you can't fix the system on the cheap. To fix the system, you have to do the types of things that have a chance of change in behavior. And that means more drug treatment, which is costly, more mental health treatment, which is costly. While I was reading some background material about your career, I came across an item that said you might be interested in running for the U.S. Senate in 2020 to uh, succeed Pat Roberts. Are you interested? Well, of course I'm interested. Uh, uh, many of us in public office are. I've said that I'll make a final decision on that sometime after we get done with a series of, of high-level appellate arguments that are scheduled for this fall and before the state Republican convention next spring. Are you waiting for Mike Pompeo to either say he's in or he's not in? He, he seems to say he wants to stay in the job he has now as Secretary of State. Well, I, I like and respect Mike, but I'm more waiting on my wife. 
<laughs> and what is her view? Uh, she'll let me know sometime later this fall. I think. Well, you'll let us know when you decide, I trust. I will, absolutely. All right, sir. Thank you very much for coming in. Appreciate your time. It's great to meet you. Come back and see us again. Thank you, Mike. Enjoy it. That is the Kansas Attorney General Derek Schmidt. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus.